text in on the wrong side again. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let's get a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Tell me when. Go anytime.
rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor. For darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice 
the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruits of trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind and it was so god made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind and god saw that it was good then god said let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air 
and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God and Father of all believers, for the glory of your name multiply by the grace of the Paschal Sacrament, the number of your children, that your church may rejoice to see fulfilled your promise to our father Abraham through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew nearer, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you 
and you only have to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of the God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us free from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with the tambourines and with dancing, and Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the commandments of life, O Israel. <clears throat> Give ear and learn wisdom. Why is it, O Israel, why is it that you are in the land of your enemies, that you are growing old in a foreign country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted among those in Hades? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. If you had walked in the way of God, you would be living in peace forever. Learn where there is wisdom where there is strength, where there is understanding, so that you may at the same time discern where there is length of days and life, where there is light for the eyes and peace. Who has found her place and who has entered her storehouses? But the one who knows all things knows her. He found her by his understanding. The one who prepared the earth for all time, filled it with four-footed creatures, the one who sends forth the light and it goes, he called it and it obeyed him, trembling. The stars shone in their watches and were glad. He called them and they said, here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can be compared to him. He found the whole way to knowledge and gave her to his servant Jacob and to Israel, whom he loved. Afterwards, she appeared on earth and lived with humankind. She is the book of the commandments of God, the law that endures forever. All who hold her fast will live, and those who forsake her will die. Turn, O Jacob, and take her. Walk toward the shining of her light. Do not give your glory to another or your advantages to an alien people. Happy are we, O Israel, for we know what is pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Judgments 
of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends, cleansed me from my secret faults? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who are reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the Valley of the Dry Bones. Then they said to me, oh, excuse me, I messed up, a reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. 
The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. On this most holy night, I'm always reminded of the movement from darkness to light, from death to life. We can forget this powerful movement in our everyday lives, but it is one that cannot and should not ever be forgotten. It is a movement that is constantly around us in a myriad of forms. Recently at a meeting I attended, a member of the Diocese of Hawaii, the diocese that experienced the horrible death due to fire, not only of buildings, including the destruction of one of their own historic churches, but most importantly, of people, has been busy trying to deal with the aftermath of this fire. This member of the Diocese of Hawaii who is a good friend of mine, is a fifth-generation Japanese-American 
and all those generations have lived in Hawaii. He was on Maui as part of a small group trying to save some of the native Hawaiian plants that were burned. He was there doing this work because the plants needed to be removed and transported elsewhere until they could be returned again. If they weren't, they would eventually die under the toxic ash that's layered over the entire area. It's very dangerous. He was try there trying to save part of God's creation that needs to live. He started pulling out only the plants that had larger leaves above the ground that were still green. A native Hawaiian elder saw him doing this and stopped him. Why are you only picking out those plants? He asked my friend. My friend responded that they looked like ones that could live. The native Hawaiian elder said to him, you forgot about the taproot. My friend looked, taproot? Look at that plant, see it? There is just a small shoot coming up. You're ignoring it, but you have to pull that plant out. Go ahead. My friend did. It was a plant that he previously ignored and many others that looked just like it. The elder continued, see the taproot? The longer, thicker root? It's the root that provides all the nutrients to the plant. Look at the root of the plant you didn't pick. Now compare it to the plant you did pick. The taproot on the one you didn't pick is longer and stronger. It's a stronger plant. Don't overlook the one you think was dead, the native elder told him. You can't just look at what you see in this service. That was the message and the lesson my friend learned. You can't just see, look and see what you see on the surface. And the same is true for us this night and always. It's easy to listen to, this, uh, to the stories of our saving history we heard this night and think, that's great, love to hear the stories, music was wonderful, love the imagery of the night, and thank goodness for a blessed Easter. If we do that, we're no better than my friend ignoring the plants that were actually the strongest. Jesus moving from death to life is an invitation to us to not look just at the surface. It's not just about the resurrection. It's about what is at the heart of the resurrection and what it means for us every day. It is simple and complex at the same time. What is it? What's the strongest taproot? It's the deep love that was shown to us in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Our work is, con is to continue to be nourished by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, and to see and make God's love known to this broken world which so desperately needs God's love and grace. The same love and grace that came down at Christmas, lived and loved among us, and died out of love for us. We do that by participating in a congregation, being fed by the lessons we hear each week, being fed by bread and wine of the Eucharist, by participating in programs in which we are not only fed by them, but feed others by bringing God's message of love and grace into the world as we leave this place. Don't be afraid, my friends in Christ, to look deeper, to have your taproot nourished deep in the heart of God, for indeed, God is there. That's our challenge for this night, and really every day as Christians. When we look around at our broken world plagued by wars and unrest, fires and mudslides, natural disasters, we can wonder where God is. Where is that light of Christ breaking into our world? Families worried about loved ones in harm's way. We pray for our loved ones who are ill or dying. We pray for those families going through strife some families breaking apart. Try as we might to fix it ourselves, something else, someone else is needed to see us through these difficult times. That someone is the risen Christ. But for some, just as Christ's resurrection is hard to fathom, trusting in God's love and grace can be difficult as well. The resurrection of Jesus points, to, points us to something greater than death 
The resurrection of Jesus tells us that there is a God who loves us and cares for us. And when we believe that our lives will, when we believe that, our lives will change. We'll no longer feel alone at any time. When we believe that there is someone who loves us wholeheartedly, unconditionally, then our lives will be changed for the better. We will find comfort and peace. That's God's promise. Receiving this great gift, this great love, we're called to share it. We'll renew our baptismal vows this night, reminding us that we are called to act as Christ did to each other. And when we can be the face, the arms, the hands of Christ in this world, when we act as the resurrected Christ to each other, then our world will be transformed. When we treat each other with love and respect, that peace, that deep taproot that we're all part of, that peace which Jesus came to proclaim, will abound in our world. May it start with us this night and be with us every day. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance has ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we, are, we, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. The candidates will now be presented. I present this person for confirmation. I present this person to be received into this communion. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do, and with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born in the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Christ. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons loving your neighbor as yourself? 
And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear us. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, Orest, right? Yes. Okay, Orest, you're first. Oh, I don't, I don't need that. I only, I'll need that in a minute. Okay. Oh, please sit down. This is like halftime at the Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> so, Orest, you want to be, conf you want to be confirmed. Yes. Why do you want to be confirmed? I want to be close to God. You want to be close to God. That's a fist bump answer right there. Fist bump. Okay, Orest, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a uh, surgical. Um, surgical. Oh, surgical instrument processing. Yes. You, you have a very important job. Anybody that's been in an operating room in this, in this building now knows that, right? <laughs> yes. You, how long have you been doing that? Uh, three years. Three years? Yes. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And what do you do for fun, Orest? I like to travel. You like to travel. Where's your favorite place to travel to? Uh, Florida. Florida. Okay, we, we call that New York South. <laughs> Why do you like Florida? It's warm. It's nice, beautiful. Wonderful. That's wonderful, wonderful. Good. And um, how long have you been coming to the cathedral? A year. A year. Nice. Nice. All right. You ready to be confirmed? Yes. Okay. Get a little closer. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for Orest. We give you thanks for his saying yes to you this day as your Holy Spirit descends upon him, and these vows are written anew on his heart. May he always know, Lord, that in everything he does, his life is a reflection of your love for him. May he always be that bright light for people. May he always be the kind of person that makes people want to know you more just by the way he lives his life. Not that he has to say anything, but just the way he lives it. May he, always live from a, may, may he always live from a place of love. All this we ask and give thanks in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, now tell me your whole name. Troy Erickson. Troy, and, and so you've been coming to the cathedral for a year yes. as well? And, and we're receiving you from where? Uh, I was confirmed in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, but that's great. So what made you want to become an Episcopalian? Well, uh, we love it here. Feel like we're part of a family. You feel like you're part of a family. Yeah. You love it here. Nice job, Dean. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Wonderful. And what do you do for a living? I'm a registered nurse. Oh, you're a registered nurse. Is that how you met? Uh, no. Yeah, no, no. Where, where, where do you, where do you nurse? Uh, North Kansas City Hospital. Oh, North Kansas City Hospital. Oh, oh, but you work yeah. at North Kansas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. We come as, we come I'm as a package deal. You come as a package deal to <laughs> North Kansas City Hospital. Yeah. Uh oh. I got the picture. I got the 411 now. All right. And what, what do you do for fun? Uh, well, we love to travel. We travel? Love to be outside. Be, um, yeah. Just be together. Be, that, yeah. That's, one, that, so, yeah. that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And how long have you two been married? Uh, four, four, years. four years. Yeah. Four years. Mm -hmm. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. 
All right. So you ready to be conf to be received? I am. Okay. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for Troy. We give you thanks for his yes to you this day. As he moves to this arm of your body, Lord, help him understand that he hasn't left something behind, but taken on a new understanding of who you are in his life. As he has a calling to be a healer, Lord, may that gift that you've, that you've given him restore people to help, help, help them restore to health, but more, Lord, may the healings that he can do, may they not only help the people that he's helping, but may they feed his soul at the same time. Guide and guard this gentle man so that all the decisions he makes in that regard can be good and right and always doing the right thing. All this we ask and give thanks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So gracious, gracious God, you brought together Troy and Orest in a bond of love. And nothing is better than when a couple comes up for confirmation, reception, or reaffirmation, doing that together. It says a lot about them, Lord, but it says a lot about their relationship with you. As they make this, these vows this day, may they always know, Lord, to be gentle with each other, especially to be gentle with each other's dreams. For the people that they are today, Lord, is not the same people that they were when they first met, nor from the day of their marriage. Help them grow old together gracefully, growing deeper and deeper in love with each other and in love with you, for you are the source of all love and grace. All this we ask in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. hand ever be over these your most awesome servants let your holy spirit ever be with them and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through jesus christ our lord amen The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit to be the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may be that we may be affirmed and strengthened in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we've been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to no they had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord.
Good evening and happy Easter. Glad to have everyone here tonight. Thank you, Bishop Diane, for being with us tonight, for confirming and receiving. Thank you to everyone who helped uh, make this service uh, what it is tonight, and especially everyone who came this morning to help decorate the church and get it ready. Uh, we had, a, we had a, um, a small but mighty crew today, so we got it done, and we're very happy for all that, and to everyone who has helped make Holy Week and Easter great. I want to remind you that immediately following the service, we have a reception in Founders Hall, a joyous reception, uh, and many helped to make that possible as well, so please come join us in Founders Hall. Also, uh, for communion this evening, we will be receiving from the main rail only, and we do serve in two kinds. All are welcome to receive. Uh, you will be given the bread, and then you'll have a choice uh, two separate chalices will be available. One, if you wish to intinct your wa wafer into the wine, you may do that. So just hold the wafer in your hand, and they'll know to come to you. If you want to drink from the cup, you simply consume your wafer, and that one will know to come to you. So uh, hopefully we'll get it all figured out. And if you need a gluten-free wafer, if you will put your hands down, then we will know to give you a gluten-free wafer. And if you want something else, you'll have to wait till the reception. Again, welcome. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. En la noche en que fue entregado a sufrimiento a la muerte, nuestro Señor Jesucristo tomó pan y dándote gracias lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos. Tomen y comen, este es mi cuerpo entregado por ustedes. Hagan esto como memorial mío. Fan ho, ta nachi belai, chu shea, dige man tu shua. Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Nimen me fang ha de shaho, yao ji yang zuo, lai ji nian huo. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Los dones de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Tómenlos en memoria que Cristo murió por ustedes. Y alimentense de Él en sus, sus corazones por fe y agradecimiento. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
you're going to come on either side of me, okay? So you're all going to push out a little bit. So it's been my habit since I've been a bishop to, um, in, in normal circumstances, have the people I can lay hands on for confirmation, reaffirmation, or reception help me do the closing blessings. So when we get to that part, and this is going to be the only time you ever get to do this unless you decide to be ordained, but I don't think you want to be ordained just so you can go like this, okay? <laughs> so we'll talk about that. But if, if any of you have a camera or whatever, this is, a, in fact, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to move this because this is like right in my line of sight, okay? Um, when I was a parish priest, I sat behind the altar, and my first Sunday there, I sat there, and I disappeared because there was a vested chalice there. It's true. Look, he, the dean offered to get me a stool. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. So you're going to have a flat hand up like this. You're your right hand, your right hand, so it's going to be your right hand up as, as high as you can get it. My hand, my hand is going to be like this. Most pre, please, priests bless with their hand this way. Bishops bless with our hands this way because um, many icons are written of Jesus like that. I, I actually think it's so you can see the bishop's ring. But you're going to be like this, okay? So the, the motion is we start up, we start up, and we go down, center, left, right, center. So it's up, down, center left, right, center. Got it? So when my hand moves, your hand's going to move. So just watch my hand, because it's not going to move for a bit here, because we're doing the Easter blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and claimed us as children through the resurrection of Christ our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of blessings. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal, inter, eternal inheritance. Amen. Y la bendición de Dios omnipotente el Padre, el Hijo, el Espíritu Santo sea con ustedes y permanezca con ustedes eternamente. Amen. Nicely done. Fist bump. Fist bump. Nicely done. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.